Well, hello friends and neighbors, John your Whiskey Neighbor here. Welcome down the Nook. It's time again to talk about the end of the journey with some bottles here. Uh, this of course was inspired by Roy at Aquavite with his recycled reviews. Those are phenomenal. This will be my take. Uh, I've got some Scotch, some Irish, some bourbon, some Canadian. Uh, and I'll tell you basically what I buy a bottle again because these bottles here, well, they're at their journey's end. Three, four. Okay, thanks for staying with me. We're going to start with some scotch. So uh, this one here is Bunnehaven. This is their uh, Stu Radur. Is that how we say it? Uh, I, I feel like this bottle came out when they were running short on their 12-year-old. In my area, the 12 has never left the shelf. We've always had it, and it's always a good price. In fact, often it's on for less than this bottle. This is a full sherried Isla Dram, though, but not peated, and it's good. But I will say, about halfway through, this is a bottle that's a great example of a change. It really became fairly briny for me, almost fishy, which was kind of cool, but really not what I want. So it is a nice bottle, but I will absolutely buy the 12 before I buy this again. So it's going to probably go in my, I'm not going to buy it again. That will probably disappoint a lot of viewers. Um, Tullamardine. 500. You know, this is a very affordable, full sherried scotch. Um, it's 43%, uh, probably colored though, and chill filtered, but still, I enjoyed this. Now, I had this at a time when I was really into uh, some X sherry, and so uh, I probably colored my experience. Still, a little rough, a little aggressive, but on a good sale, I actually probably would buy this again. Tamdu 10. Now this is also a nice, significant X Sherry bottle. Beautiful presentation, really. Don't you just love that bottle? I think what a good looking bottle. Uh, also 43, but also probably, um, you know, colored and chill filtered. This is a little nicer. So if I actually were to go back and say, okay, if you only bought one of these, which would you buy again? I would absolutely buy the Tamdu. It is a really nice dram. It's just a really uh, better balance, a little more uh, refinement, if I could. This uh, Tullibardine was tasty, but it was a little aggressive, a little sulfuric. So this one for sure, I'd buy again. Uh, heading into, I did a, a recent walk through some uh, affordable smoked or peated scotches. And this is a very affordable single malt. And from comments, I think many people enjoy it. For me, it really didn't get enough interest going uh, even though, you know, single malt, very affordable, it's 40% and just didn't have enough going on that I know I'm not going to buy this again. And that's all the scotch. Let's go over to some Irish. So if you follow the channel, uh, you'll know that I like this one. This is Writer's Tears. I know it's sourced, but they did a good job sourcing. And this one is aged in a French oak as well as American Oak, uh, bought a little higher, I think, yeah, 46%. This is the Double Oak Riders Tears, and I really like that extra little bit of oak conversation going on with that little natural, you know, fruit forward nature of Irish. This one started good, stayed good, and I would buy this one again. Kilbegan, single pot. This is an interesting uh, bottle in that they use 2% oats, in their uh, their mash bill, which is kind of a little bit unique. I think it's 43, is it not? Yeah, 43%. Uh, this, this I didn't warm up to right away, uh, but uh, you know, my palate I think really, really took to it when I was looking for a little softer, fuller, but easy, easy drinking dram. And so um, this changed into a, into a really enjoyable, like just a nice cream of wheat kind of kind of note, and I liked it so. I'm probably going to buy that one again sometime. That's it for Irish. Now we're going to head over to some Americans. Um, oh, I've got them in big order, which is odd. Booker's. If you're a long-term watcher of the channel, you know, Booker's comes out for the U.S. four times a year. Up in international markets, you get one. 
It's 2019-01, so it is, uh, I've heard, confirmed, maybe it is Teresa's batch. I like this far more than just about anybody else online. But now that I have a different batch, I have to say this one was a little rough and I would not seek out Teresa's batch. I would seek out a different one. Like the 2020-01, that's the one I'm working through right now. Uh, is that Granny's, uh, Granny's batch? Uh, and that is a lot better than this. So I won't seek this out, but I would definitely get another Booker's. Hi Wes, Double Rye. I didn't realize I had a special bottle from Wine & Beyond. I really didn't. I really, for some reason, bought this thinking it was just a double rye, which I have had a sample and it's quite good. But this is actually a special aged in X Manhattan cask. It's got the old, you know, 16 year old, is it Parton rye? Who, you know, in the young rye. This ended up being an amazing rye. I would, and it, it got. It was good up front, but it got richer into cherry notes. Really did. It really hugged the cherry in the middle. I liked it. So I'd buy a High West Double Rye. I know that's a different bottle, but I'd buy a Double Rye just because that was so good. Regular bourbon, Larceny. It's been hard to find actually up here in my market, but now it's on all the shelves at a decent price. You know, 46% wheater instead of the rye. Uh, it didn't change much. It opened up uh, a little less spicy than some, a little easier, I would say. Uh, I kind of said creamy on another one there with the oats, but kind of creamier a little bit in the mouth, and, and I enjoyed it. Didn't change, but I'd buy it again. Ah, Dickel Rye. Dickel Rye is a bargain in my market. It is still uh, under 30 usually around the $26 mark. I've seen it for less. Uh, and at that price, you know, I've come to really like this. I really, I, I shot it against Bullet Rye because it's actually become my Bullet Rye replacement. I find it incredibly similar to Bullet Rye, but it's got a little something. Whether it's that extra charcoal mellowing or, I don't know. I have, I have taken to this, which is interesting because Dickel number 12 is one of two bottles I've ever poured down a drain. So this, uh, I know it's sourced, I know it's MGP, but I like it and it's affordable. Didn't change at all. It was what it was the whole way through. I'll buy it again. <laughs> I've been saying yes to a lot of bottles here. Uh, here's one, American Rockies. This is sourced, is this one from Wyoming? Oh, I should have looked that up before. You know, it uh, halved in price. It was sitting on shelves around $80 Canadian and then now it's around $40 Canadian. And at $40, I think it's a very decent bourbon. Um, it actually did fall apart somewhere in the middle of the bottle here. It got, um, I don't know if it's sour, but it, it seemed to be, uh, it didn't have a richness. It, it was kind of punchy, uh, not didn't hold together, uh, kind of alcoholic, uh, and it's too bad. It's a nice presentation. I love Wyoming whiskey, uh, but this, just because of the way it became, for me, even at that price of $40, I'm probably not going to buy it again. It's too bad. Let's <laughs> be pretty quick. Jim Beam Black. I like Jim Beam Profile. I'm sure I'll buy more Jim Beam. This didn't give me enough. Didn't evolve at all from beginning to end, but I don't think I'll buy Jim Beam Black again. A number of viewers have suggested, well, try the Devil's Cut. It's often at the same price. Gives you a little more oak hug. Probably I'll go that way because this, for me, I'm not going to buy it again. Oh, guess we're done with that. Now we're going to International. This is Baines. You know, I had an interesting experience, but I think it was me more than the whiskey opening up. When I first had this, it reminded me of a pretty generic Canadian profile. But the more times I went back to this 43%, 100% corn from South Africa, the smoother, buttier, like more butter forward, um, just a really relaxed in the palate dram. Not a lot going on the nose, sweet honey, but it became something that I actually quite enjoyed. I'm not running back to get this bottle, but I liked it. And it became, a, a, like I enjoyed finishing this one off. Probably get it again. Millstone. I like Millstone. This is their 100 rye. What is that, 100, day, 100 months, uh, 100, 100 proof, 100% uh, rye. I can't remember all the hundreds going on in here. It, it's got some nice things that it's got all that age stamp and whatever, and I love rye. This, um, moved 
definitely into some more grassy herbal notes, which I'm okay with in rye, but but it moved there. It didn't. It started to me kind of dark cherry, kind of kind of like a like a dark fruit forward, kind of closer to lot forty, and then it, it pushed over into a grassiness. Uh, it's still good. It's a good rye, and I'd I'd recommend it. I just know that I'm not going to be getting it again. It just didn't hold where I want, which is funny because Dickel has all of that grass in it. Absolutely. But, you know, I paid $22 to $25 for Dickel, and when I want a grassy rye, that's where I'll go. Okay, I'm going to talk about a couple of Canadians here, uh, kind of at the same time. This is uh, Rupert's from Eau Claire, southern Alberta, and uh, Goodrich and Williams, they're out of uh, Delta, BC. I think these are a great example of, you know, new distilleries, distilleries that are smaller, working hard for a you know, craft presentation. Um, really hats off to all the hard work that these uh, uh, new players in a big, big uh, whiskey market. Uh, even with saying that, I found these perfectly average. Were they good? Yeah, they were good. They were a good Canadian profile, absolutely. They've got you know three or four grains going on, uh, aged in a variety of casks. It's pretty smooth presentation. It's nicely sweet. That's decent whiskey. It didn't excite me really at all. And uh, and I have to say, even though I know some of them got some kudos at some, some awards lately, so good for them. Uh, for me and my palate, I'm probably not going to pick either of them up again. Hey, uh, two left. JP Weiser's Seven Rebels. Uh, you know, this one really changed for me with time. It was, uh, I think it was a BC exclusive release. Uh, and it was about 43%, and it became very oak forward, which I kind of liked. I kind of liked the oak char going on as, it, you know, trying to trying to create a, a counterpoint to Weiser's fairly sweet profile. Actually, a lot like the last two that I just talked about. I, I, uh, I ended up enjoying this. I, I liked it probably from the beginning, I will say. But, but the oakiness really started to come alive for me and, and kept my interest. And for that reason, if I saw this on the shelf, I would be tempted to get it again. I certainly will get more uh, JP Weiser special releases because I love what they do. I'm on the fence. Let's say buy it again. Last one. Last one. <laughs> this is uh, Lot 40. This is the 11-year-old cast strength. Um... I enjoyed this more in the bottom half of the bottle. Could have been a mental thing, right? When I'm working through the first part, I'm really comparing it a lot with a 12 year old. Now that is a far and distant memory. So now I'm coming to the bottle kind of on its own. What has it given me? And uh, so it was probably more my palate evolving than the bottle evolving, but it became, it just stood up as such a good rye. I like the regular Lot 40. I do, probably more now than I ever have. Uh, but the cast strength 12 and, and this 11. This one, to me, uh, I know I've heard some people say just the opposite, but for my palate, it was a little more uh, spice oak and a little less dark cherry. Uh, I've, I've heard people say almost the opposite with the oak amount, but I only can talk from my experience. That said, if I see an 11 year old on the shelf, I am absolutely buying it again. You know, thanks for staying with me. I know that's pretty quick. Uh, all of those, of course, I reviewed. If you're really interested, you want to get like more tasting notes. Wait, why did he like it? Wait, why is he buying it again? It's always better to go back through the catalog and uh, pour a dram and maybe spend a few minutes thinking and talking about any one of those specifics. This is just a way to say, you know, the bottles are done. Got to clear them out of the house. And would I buy it or not? Thanks for joining me. You guys have a fantastic week. Thank you.